dreams. We're all born with them. Dreams of adventure, of finding a sense of purpose, meaning, of reaching our full potential. And wherever your dreams take you, your journey starts with UAC. Hey, my name is Josh. I'm from Charles Sturt University studying at Aubrey Wodonga campus and I am in my fourth year of a Bachelor of Education degree. Hi, my name is Victoria and I'm a second year student at ACU, Australian Catholic University. I'm studying a Bachelor of Primary Education. Hi, I'm Cortana. I'm studying a Bachelor of Arts pathway to primary teaching at Western Sydney University. Back when I was in high school, I thought I wanted to be a rock star that travelled around in a van, playing at pubs, just living that sort of nomadic lifestyle until I realised that probably won't be too financially lucrative. Both my parents are primary teachers, so I've always kind of grown up in that, in that teaching environment. Um, so I decided why not go to university and do both primary and secondary uh, teaching in a K-12 course. So when I first finished high school, I wasn't actually sure what I wanted to do. There were so many options and I hadn't really taken the time to narrow down what it was that I wanted to study. Um, some of my options included business studies, accounting, also a little bit of HR and in the end, I ended up settling and doing a diploma of accounting. So I had done that at TAFE. I didn't actually end up uh, enjoying the course and realizing that I guess that was for me. Um, although I did finish it and make sure that I had that under my belt as, um, I guess, a option for something to fall back on. It was really something that I decided that I wanted to move into a different industry and then I ended up taking some time um, to work out what I wanted to do and ended up falling into full-time employment for a number of years. In 2020, the year I graduated high school, we had our first big COVID lockdown and so in that really long period just being stuck at home, I just dug in and researched every possible university and every course they offered that would result to me being in a primary school teacher. So I talked with my aunt, who's actually a high school teacher. Um, I talked with my careers advisors at school and we played around a little bit with different options that I could do. And I decided on the Bachelor of Arts pathway because after four and a half years, I'll graduate with a bachelor degree and a master's degree rather than doing four years and only graduating with a bachelor's degree. I did a bunch of research to make sure that I was uh, keen on the course that I wanted to do. Back in high school, I didn't know if I wanted to do primary or secondary school teaching. Um, so I was looking through and Charles State University actually offered a K-12 course so I could do both of them. Um, so I decided to put that as my first and second preference, I believe. And, um, and lucky enough, I got it. So when I was looking to study teaching, I did some research about the different universities that I wanted to attend. Um, there were a lot of various teaching degrees out there. I had the option of doing straight primary teaching. There was secondary teaching degrees, a combination of primary and secondary, and also the early childhood and uh, teaching as well. So there was quite a vast range of courses that I could choose from. So that um, was a little bit tricky because I needed to work out which one I wanted to do specifically. Now, I knew early child was not really something I wanted to specifically um, study. And I narrowed down my search to primary education. A lot of universities out there did offer that in combination with doing a psychology um, degree, but there wasn't really that 
need for me personally as I was looking at doing straight primary teaching. A lot of the universities do have website, um, website information for their courses and it enabled me to look at what the actual units were that were covered in their degrees, as well as some of the experience that I would get in terms of practical experience, how long I got to do the actual um, prac, as they call it, over the entirety of my degree. And also when I would start that prac, because that was quite important to me that it was something that I got to experience towards the beginning of my course and not something that was left to the end. So another thing that was quite important to me was the option of being able to teach in a Catholic school after completing my university degree. There are many universities that do have the teaching degree available, but with ACU, the reason why I chose to study with them is they incorporate the religious studies into their teaching degrees that gives students the opportunity to work in Catholic schools after they have graduated. That wasn't necessarily something I am definitely going to do, but I wanted to have that as an option of working in a Catholic school um, in the event that I choose not to work in the public school system. So when I say research, I looked on the websites. A lot of the websites had a little chat bubble. So I would go in the little chat bubble and ask for um, advice and opinions from people who are already at the university. I would look at virtual tours because we couldn't actually do tours um, during COVID lockdown. I'd talk to my friends too uh, that I knew were going into the same area as me and no one picked the same thing as me, but that's okay. Yeah, so a lot of online um, looking at websites, looking at virtual tours. I was really lucky that the year before COVID lockdown, I got to go on a few campuses. So I had an idea of what I liked um, on campus and what I didn't like. So I could narrow down my institutions. The only university open day that I went to was the one at Charles Sturt um, at Aubrey Wodonga. I was led around the campus, got to sit in the big lecture hall that we have, uh, got to look at the on-campus accommodation. And as I was walking around, I pretty much just knew that I'd be ending up there. I had a, there was a whole bunch of fun people around. I was got to see everyone in their sort of natural university environment. Um, so I highly recommend if you're thinking about going to a university open day. So once I had narrowed down the type of university degree that I was interested in and also the type of course that I wanted to complete in terms of tagging on the religious education into the Bachelor of Teaching, I narrowed down my choice to ACU. I did attend open, the open day at ACU and that was to give me that opportunity to really look at what the university was like, being able to see how that differs to, I guess, learning in a college environment or potentially how it also differs from the school environment as it had been many years since um, I had actually studied personally myself. The uni open days allow students to not just get a grasp of the university, but see what services are available to support you in your studies, the extracurricular activities that are available, um, such as if you have sporting interests or music interests and so forth, that you can do that as well as study, and the social aspect of how you can continue to enjoy the social elements that play a big part of your education in combination with studying your degree. Being an Indigenous person, I was really lucky um, to be involved with both Western Sydney Uni and Macquarie Uni throughout almost my whole high school life. Um, so I was really familiar with a lot of the Western Sydney campuses as well as the Macquarie campus. So that was a really good help into what kind of environment I was looking for. I got to go on schools only open days um, in year 10 and 11, 
which was really, really beneficial because I thought I wanted to go to one um, university, but as soon as I went on campus, I didn't like it. And by the time year 12 sort of roll, rolled around when all the universities were doing their open days, I pretty much decided uh, what course I was going to go into. So I sort of popped in and out of a few open days. Didn't really pay much attention. I know I probably should have, but just to get a bit more of an idea so that I could help other people who didn't quite know what they wanted to go into um, so that I could help my friends and tell them, like help them explore their options. I found the application process uh, into university super smooth. Since I live in Victoria, I applied through VTAC and UAC to my universities. I just sat down and talked to my careers advisor and she ran me through the application process and, and showed me how to do everything. So I really didn't have to worry about a single thing. So the application process for me, I had applied directly through UAC and I found that quite a streamless and really easy process to go through. Now, the ability to apply directly through UAC enabled me to put in my application for the various uh, universities. Obviously, I had chosen ACU personally as my preference um, up the top. However, it did enable me in the event that I wasn't accepted into ACU, I did have the ability to add additional universities onto that list so that I had um, some backup options for me. Being able to apply through UAC directly meant that I just had to go to that one website, upload all of my information, put in my preferences and it was all done through one system whereby I didn't have to go to various websites or um, various application processes because everything was managed through that one portal. If there was anything that I needed to know, such as where the progress was of my application or anything that potentially, you know, was an extra question, all of my answers were given to me from the UAC team and it meant that it was just such an easy process to have that one communication uh, contact and also the one website link that I could log into, check things, upload information as required and then look out for that one email that was going to come through from UAC that would say um, where my successful application was granted at. So... With my UAC application, I filled everything in and made sure to tick that I was Indigenous because I feel like that's a really important note. And almost, well, not instantly, but very soon after, every single uni that was on my UAC application had reached out to me. Even institutions that weren't on my UAC application reached out to me with Indigenous entry schemes. Now, my heart was set on Western Sydney University. I was in my mind not going anywhere else so I made sure to sit the Indigenous early entry pathway with Western Sydney and then got offered spots to sit um, alternate entry pathways for Macquarie, ACU, um, Uni Newcastle, Uni Wollongong but me being me I politely declined um, because I'd already gotten news that I had got it and accepted into Western Sydney um, and I didn't really want to go anywhere else but when I was navigating UAC and putting all my preferences in it was pretty easy to navigate and play around with. Um, I did use the help line a little bit because no one in, I live with my grandparents no one knows how to work technology other than me so I just need a little bit of help and I found that the same issues I was having um, my friends were having too so being able to reach out to UX staff on the other side of the computer really really helped a lot of people because then I with the knowledge that like UAC told me of what I need to do I could then help all my friends who were a bit more reluctant to reach out to some stranger but once everything was in and submitted I'd sort of changed my mind a few times about my second and third preferences and that was really easy to play around with so overall yeah it was really easy oh, it was surprisingly easy. 
before I went to university, I thought it would be hectic. I thought there'd be just people everywhere, um, that the classes, classes would be super hard, that there'd be parties every weekend. I was pretty nervous going to university because coming from a small country town, I really didn't know what to expect. So what were my impressions of what the university life would be like before I got onto campus? Well, I have to say being first time at university, I did picture it to be like what you see on those, you know, Hollywood movies where you see the big auditorium and all the students seated side by side with your lecturer down the front. And it wasn't quite like that. Studying in co- over a COVID um, year, all of our lectures were online. It enabled me the ability to listen to the lecturer provide the content each week. But it was fantastic in the sense that it allowed me to pause the videos and also rewind them if there was something I didn't quite understand or if I was busy writing notes and needed to hear something again. Um, And it also enables you to listen to your lectures during your own time. In terms of the tutorials, that was actually something that I did um, kind of have an idea of what to expect. So working in small classrooms of roughly around 20 to 25 students and being able to work with your tutor to put your content into practice for that week. That's a really beneficial process in university education because it enables you to really get a good depth of understanding of that weekly content that you are learning. And it's definitely helped in that peer environment that enables you to work with other students that can also answer and share and collaborate all that information together. So before I started uni, I had heard a lot of things by people whose older siblings are at university or newly graduate teachers that were teaching at my school that had just come out of university saying that it's like a full-time job. If you're studying full-time at uni, you're doing four units and it's at least 10 hours of study and work for each unit. And I was petrified. I was so scared to jump into this having to balance then this full-time job with my part-time job that I'm currently working and have been for four years now I was very very scared uh, but I was it was an excited scared I was just really worried about this massive workload apparently imposed on us and that if we didn't get it right we'd be kicked out or that we'd fail everything and we'd spend our entire lives locked in the uni um, or we'd drop out and have to then pay back the money but not have a job to pay back the money it was crazy after I went to university though my thoughts about it completely changed I lived in a house with about 20 other people And while, yes, there's definitely opportunities to go out and and hang around the common areas and um, kick the footy on the oval, you definitely had a lot more time to retreat to your own space, um, study to your heart's content, use the amenities on campus, and the classes weren't as difficult as I thought they would be. The university lecturers really helped transition you from high school to university, so it doesn't feel like you're just being dropped in the deep end. So have my impressions changed? Well, over the lockdown period, there was quite a few changes that we had to adapt to with online tutorials, and that was very different. Although being in a classroom that moves over to Zoom sessions, which I'm sure that you would have all experienced uh, during high school or in your workplace, um, they can be a little bit challenging as it's not that same human interaction within a classroom. There was a little bit of difficulty with not having as many social elements of uni. However, Looking back at that, that was all a learning experience and something that I could use to build on as to how you're able to work with um, other peers within your cohort. Uh, when you're, you know, geographically distanced and also during these quite challenging COVID times. 
in in terms of the actual system itself as well having all of your books available online was something that was definitely not what I expected it was great because it meant less textbooks on my desk I was able to get everything electronically and that was really helpful as well so I'm absolutely loving university I love everything about it the 10 hours for four units all the time is is wrong it's a it's a guide it's a recommendation but the people who are getting high distinctions are doing about that but I found that I'd say have a two-hour class and a one-hour lecture every week as well as pre-work to have to do which maybe took me two hours spread out across a few days so I was already doing five hours of study per se without actually thinking about it and then when you get assessments and assignments you sit for a couple of hours every few days or every few weeks depending on when the deadline is and I look back and I've almost got my 10 hours for every subject every week which I found as a surprise because it doesn't feel like a full-time job it's very flexible all the tutors and teachers and lecturers are very lovely in the sense that if you need an extension, they're probably going to give it to you. If you're struggling a little bit with the workload, you talk to them and they work out what fits best for you. It's much more personalised than what high school was. So even the social aspect of it, I didn't think I'd have enough time to make friends or to go out for lunch with people, but there's food places on campus and we would sit and we would talk about the class that we just had over like a kebab. So because I'm studying a K-12 teaching course, I had a plethora of different subjects to choose from. My first year looked like doing some basic primary school subjects like easy maths and easy science. Um, just to build you in. And then in my second year, that's when placement subjects started and more in-depth secondary school teaching subjects began. So some of the units that are covered in the teaching degree, your first year will give you a fantastic base foundation of teaching, all of the different types of learning theories, what teaching is as an actual profession, and give you that ability to kind of work out why you're in the teaching profession, what you want to do in terms of helping children grow their knowledge and also become individual um, learners as well as in a collaborative sense. We also have um, your generalist units such as your maths, your science, your English, arts, um, music, so to speak, And then there's also the ability to embed that um, with Indigenous uh, knowledge and culture, Um, looking back at Australian history and being able to incorporate that into the education system as well. So because I'm doing a Bachelor of Arts degree, um, I've only just finished my first year. And within the Bachelor of Arts degree, we have a few compulsory subjects. So I finished them. Um, they, I had an ethics unit, I had an Australian politics and like history unit, I had a foundations of English unit, which has really helped me develop my English skills compared to high school essay writing, university essay writing is very different. Um, and that's really helped me. Um, I've also had a diversity unit, which was really eye opening, um, as well as doing my art major units in between that so I'm doing music performance which was a little bit tricky to do this semester over lockdown but is really quite fun and in the next few years I get to do my elective unit. University life has been great so far. Living on campus has definitely been a highlight and making heaps of new friends 
living in my own little room away from from home, cooking my meals and and sorting myself out. Having some independence to myself has definitely been one of the best experiences of my life so far. Okay, so what has my uni life been like so far? The experience I had over first semester was everything was on campus and it was fantastic. It enabled me to meet face-to-face my lecturers and tutors, all of the support staff that were available, say through the library, academic skills, and also um, my peers, which made up a really big um, part of my life. I was able to form some great friendships and network with people, not just necessarily within my degree, but also that extended collaborative environment of students that are available through different degrees that you might connect with because of your social, um, you know, things that you actually connect over, such as myself being a mature age student. And I had some other hobbies and interests that enabled me to connect with some students that were studying the nursing degree as an example so first semester was really good we were on campus and we just had to scan into each class with our qr code um but other than that it was really normal and really fun like i met my best friend on the second day that i was on campus and we are really tight even now through lockdown it was really good my, the, my favourite thing at the moment is I miss the chairs at my university. They're really fun and you can lay back on them so they don't hurt your back. Um, it's a weird thing to be your favourite thing about university, but I do miss the chairs. And it was really good because the class sizes aren't massive. They're about the same as the high school class. So about 30 people big for the compulsory units that I was doing so it was really good to have an interpersonal relationship with my tutors Um, I could just flick them an email anytime and they'd respond but then second semester was a little bit harder um, just because it was on online it was all in lockdown Um, and I really miss the aspect of actually going on campus because I find being on campus motivates me more Um, But other than that, it was really, really good. And I'm really glad we get to go back on campus next year. I can't wait for it. Classes are fun and going to your hands-on placements is great. But living on res and and making friends has definitely been a, a one of the best parts. Sydney and some other states actually all experienced lockdown. That moved into an online university life. That was different in the sense where everything went online. It was more of a solo learning experience in the the essence that I was by myself, where I had to do a lot of my work remotely. However, the university was fantastic in having a lot of our, um, so our tutorials went online, obviously. But we also had some social events that were really put through for those first year students um, to help them build their confidence and their study skills, their social skills. And we had things like trivia nights and some other social events that were held on an online basis, enabling people to really try and build that community of what uni life would be like in the event that um, we were able to go back on campus. That didn't happen over second semester, but now during uh, 2022, everything is going back onto campus and will enable students to have that proper experience whereby you're able to be there in person, meet different students along the way, and also have a little bit more of a better understanding of all of the different services that are available to you to help you um, integrate into the university life and move away from what it was like in high school education. I'm going to be really vague and say the environment. Everyone, you've got people who are fresh out of high school like me. You've got mature age students. One of the students um, that I'm in a class with, he's 
in his early 70s coming back looking for more education after he's retired so it's really really interesting to get um, opinions on things and have class debates with people who are about my age but then are also older than me uh, have more opinions have experienced different things to have their opinions on it and then even have the tutors have their opinion on it too because a lot of my tutors that I had this year are actually postgrad students who are specialized in that certain area um, teaching undergrad students which was really fascinating to me and really enjoyable. been a couple of times where I've considered changing my course because I'm studying secondary school teaching as well I do have the opportunity to switch from say English teaching to perhaps like maths or science or modern history so there have been a couple of times where I've thought I could I could switch around but after talking to my careers advisors and lecturers and everything I've always come back to English being probably the thing I'm most passionate about so I've always stuck with that. Have I had any thoughts about changing my degree? Yes um, and no. So I have looked at um, potentially whether I have made the right decision in just doing straight primary education. I have questioned myself as to whether I should have also incorporated secondary education. I'm still tossing up as to whether that is something that I do want to change into, but I know that the process within university is quite simple. It may extend my period of time that I am studying as some of my subjects I may not have covered in my first year and will need to tag those on, um, which increases your length of time. But it is such quite a simple process in terms of being in contact with my course coordinator and having the opportunity to discuss what my thoughts are and for my course coordinator to be able to give me the information that I need as to if I want to do pursue that change and how to go about that. I haven't thought to change my course at all this year. I am loving it, although this year was a little bit boring with the compulsory units. Um, I looked ahead in our handbook and looked to the units that I'm going to get started with next semester, and I'm really excited by that. I'm really excited about what I can learn and how I can develop um, as a future teacher. So, no, I haven't looked into changing my degree well through some of the placements that I've completed I've actually been given a couple of job offers but at the moment I think my hope and dream for finishing my uni course is to go into secondary English teaching and move to the country I used to live in the city and then I moved to the country and I completely fell in love with it so when I get back from university I'm definitely going to be looking for a regional spot um, to set up shop teach some English and yeah who knows? So what are my hopes and dreams when I finish uni? Well, the first thing is the graduation outfit. I really am looking forward to putting on the hat and the gown um, and having my family there just to pretty much congratulate me on the hard work that I've done. Um, but following all of the glamorous side of it, uh, what I really would like to do is I really want to to help children that are predominantly from the um, lower socioeconomic suburbs um, within Sydney specifically to help them uh, with their education. I'm really passionate about children having an ability to read and write and to pretty much enable them to be the best of who they can be while they're at primary school and hopefully make an impact in a child's life that will help them personally with their education. So when I finish my degree, I'm hoping to do really well in my prac placements during my master's degree. And I'm really, really hoping for targeted grad, which is where schools reach out to the university and reach out to the individuals 
if they make a really good impression when they're on um, prac placement and you are hired as a full-time teacher when you graduate. So that's really what I'm hoping for. But I graduate in the middle of the year, so I'll graduate in July. So I'll probably have to casual teach for a little bit, but that's okay. I really am looking forward to getting experience from different schools and different environments and different age groups. Um, I've also applied for a few Department of Education scholarships. So um, hopefully if I don't get targeted grad, I get permanent pay placement if I get one of these scholarships, either in a rural and remote community or somewhere out here. So I'm just trying to be the best teacher I can possibly be. And when I'm teaching, I'm always just going to keep educating myself, keep doing professional development and just be the best teacher I can possibly be. If you're thinking about going to university, just do it. Whether you stay at home or you go to university, there's always going to be a part of you that wishes you did the other thing. So if right now you're thinking university is probably the place I'll enjoy myself more, then just go. You have heaps of opportunities to expand your world, get a bit smarter and meet a whole bunch more people. So if I were you, I'd definitely consider university to be a great place to go. So applying to university, what um, would be a tip that I would give? I would probably say definitely to look at all of your early options um, for early entry. They can take a huge amount of stress off students, whereby when you're applying for an early offer, it means that you're able to look at all of the different um, universities and the course that you're interested in put through your application and then have an offer sent to you before you actually commence your HSC. In a lot of instances, most students who do apply for early entry will receive an outcome before the HSC begins. And that enables you to take that stress off you so that you can sit down, complete your exam and know that you have a offer that has been provided from your university that takes that stress away. Because let's be honest, the HSC exams can be quite daunting, especially over what we've had as a two-year pandemic and having that little bit of security of having an offer that has been provided to you earlier in the piece can make a world of difference with your mental health and stress levels. I'd give just a little bit of advice. I am a very big warrior. I had lots of anxiety um, before applying to uni when I enrolled in my first units I was freaking out but now I see that was all unnecessary anxiety like just relax um <laughs> is the best thing I can say um it's all going to work out even if you don't get in to your first preference um there's so many different pathways into the course that you love um it might mean you have to do your first year at a different university but then you can go straight into your second year of your preferred course, do your research, look into it, look online, look at your options, ask people you know that are in the course. If you don't know who's in the course, talk to the universities themselves. Um, Western Sydney has Student Central. I'm sure other unis have a very similar thing that it's like a helpline run by students that can point you in the right direction to people, can get you in contact with people that'll help you. Reach out to your friends and family. I knew my family's opinions really mattered and they told me to calm down and I didn't. And I'm looking back now and it was not worth the freak out. So just relax into it. If you don't get what you want desperately, there's always other pathways. UAC represents many institutions across New South Wales and the ACT. The universities featured in today's webinar are a small selection of the many institutions which offer the courses discussed today. Students should research all university offerings so they can make informed decisions regarding their future study.